if there's a way you could legally save money on anything, wouldn't you do it? I think the answer is yes. We're going to continue our conversation about legal entities. So, the really, the purpose, one of the main purposes of having a legal entity is you kind of have uh, you and you have uh, your, and it, and it could be a, a business, it could just be uh, that you, you've got the, the, the entity for whatever reasons you use it for. Uh, you've got you and you've got the entity. The whole purpose of setting up uh, a business entity or an LLC of some kind or, uh, or what a corporation is to keep these two things separate, to keep them totally separate. Uh, on the books, they're separate. Uh, uh, legally, they're separate. And so the reason that a lot of people want to do that is let's say that I am, I'm renting a house and uh, I own it personally. And one of the tenants uh, falls down the stairs, says that it was the, uh, the, something was wrong with the stairs or the carpet or whatever, and they come sue me. Well, if the house that they live in is here, and so is my personal retirement account, and so is you know, a little business that I'm doing, when they sue me, they get to sue all of this stuff too. They could really go after all of those things. Where if this is shifted here, say the business is shifted here, now there's a, a legal separation where I still control the entity, but it's not me. It's two separate things. Then if they fall down the stairs, etc., they can go ahead and you know, sue the LLC that owns that home, but they're not going to come after my retirement account because those are legally completely separate things, not even seen as the same thing, same person, same anything, where if I don't have the legal entity, it is all just seen as lumped all together in one big thing. And now, you know, I'm not a big doom and gloom person. I'm not running around thinking that everybody's going to sue me. But here's the thing. No offense, but we live in America where is the land of the free and the home of the brave uh, where there's a few free and a few brave and some other people that think they're going to become free by going after the people that are free and brave and they think that's the way they're going to get money is suing somebody. And then there's other times where it's really poten potentially justifiable. Uh, keeping those two things separate uh, is very wise. A very, very wise thing. So we've already covered in previous lessons uh, a sole proprietorship. Uh, we've covered uh, an LLC or a limited liability company. Uh, we've covered an S-Corp and how an S-Corp works and what an S-Corp is. And then uh, today our, our lesson is going to go over an, being an LLC but being taxed as an S-Corp. And so we have... Uh, our entity that's set up, and as an LLC, it gives us that protection uh, from liability, right? And so we, all the money that we make from that particular LLC, all the money goes into, uh, gets paid to us, and then this money we take and we put it into a business, a business bank account. Okay, so we have our business bank account that handles all, all the affairs of the LLC, uh, all of the expenses that we have on that rental property or the business, etc. Uh, we pay from this, so we have our business expenses that are all uh, tax deductible. We get deductions for that, and then uh, we pay ourselves as an LLC. Uh, we don't have to worry about you know the reasonable salary and uh, all of the different things, if it's an LLC, as an S-Corp, we do have to set it up and have the, you know, the salary and, and draws and the meetings and all that stuff if we're an S-Corp. But as an LLC, it's a little bit looser where we get the tax 
more of the tax benefits of an S corp, but more of the of the 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 runnings and the and the I don't want to say looser uh, looser restrictions, but I mean that's that's just kind of what it is, and I'm not that's not like a legal term by any means. But uh, all the personal expenses, you know, we can we take from this come to us, and you know we we pay ourselves a certain amount, and then anything extra that we take out is considered a, a, a shareholder distribution uh, or a, a dividend. And then, of course, by taking that, then we're, we're taxed. So if we take a dividend or a shareholder or a distribution, then uh, it's, it's taxed differently. It's taxed at a lower, at a lower rate. And so by being an, an LLC taxed as an S-corp, uh, we don't have to have the annual... Uh, meetings. We don't have to have the meeting like we do with an S-Corp. Uh, we still do uh, file the two tax returns. We have the LLC and we have the, the personal. The fees uh, to run an LLC as an S-Corp are lower than doing an S-Corp. There are uh, fewer rules when it comes to uh, being an LLC taxed as an S-Corp. The only thing that I would... Uh, caution against, I'm, I'm letting everybody know that this is uh, something that you can do. You can be an LLC, you can be an S-Corp, or you can be an LLC that's taxed as an S-Corp, but you need to work with a competent tax professional. Because in the world of taxes, you have, you have the people that do taxes, and then you have auditing. Right? Some firms do both. Uh, and I've met with people that work with firms that do uh, the, the taxes and the auditing so that they are making sure that as their taxes are being done, they're avoiding all the things where they could potentially be audited because the firm that does their taxes also does audits and can make sure that they steer clear of anything that would be auditable. Uh, they try to avoid and, and, and navigate everywhere they need to to make sure that they're avoiding uh, being audited. And so uh, talking with tax professionals that do both, they have told me that they prefer, uh, if someone wants to be taxed as an S-corp, to just be an S-corp, because they said there are just more potential uh, ways to be audited if it's an LLC taxed as an S-corp than if it was just an S-corp. Not saying that one is better than the other. Uh, that's just talking to somebody, again, you have to think of their perspective. Is they're coming from a perspective of an auditor as well, and so there's just going to be a different opinion uh, than if you're just talking to an attorney or just talking to a CPA or just talking to an auditor that may not know uh, all the differences. Right? And so, again, just to review our legal entities, you can have uh, an LLC, you can have an S-Corp, or you can be an LLC taxed uh, as an S-Corp, electing to be taxed as an S-Corp. But really, at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? What we're trying to do is the, the IRS came out with this code uh, called the, the Internal Revenue Code. And it's really like the rule book of this game we play called Money and the United States. They come out with the rule book, new rules or sub-rules or sub-rules of sub-chapters of rules uh, are created every year. Every year there's a new book that comes out about that thick called the Master Tax Guide. You know, and it used to be that you go and you, you buy the book, and if you're super boring, uh, you, read, you read the book, right? Where now, uh, I was reading something the other day that said the number one source for information with CPAs and even doctors, as funny as this sounds, for CPAs is Google. They go to Google, they, and they're not just looking for people's opinions. They go to Google so that Google will find in the master tax guide where they need to look. Then they'll usually have a digital copy of the master tax guide and go look at it there. They don't just have to memorize where it is in this book, right? 
And so uh, there are some that still value uh, having all the tax deductions and exemptions and LLC, S Corp, so having that all memorized, but there's just too much. So the, the, the IRS comes out with this rule book. Uh, here's the rules of this game called the United States and Money. And if you know the rules and you follow the rules, your chances of winning go up. And what is winning this game? This game, the United States and money, how do you win? You keep the most possible. You pay what you legally owe, but legally as little as possible. Why overpay? Overpaying uh, what the rule book says to pay because we don't know the rules is not something like noble where I pay more in taxes, therefore I'm a better person. That has nothing to do with anything. And it's not illegal, it's not shady, it's not you know, skirting legalities if we know the rules better. You know, the time of this recording, and this is not, I'm not making a political statement, I'm just making a, a common sense statement, there's a lot of people uh, that are very upset with certain uh, business owners or politicians uh, that in their past or their present don't pay a lot in taxes. Well, if they just know the rules of the game and they're not cheating, I don't believe in cheating, but if they just happen to know the rules and they're following the rules, now there's the arguments of, you know, what is what, is what and what's defined as this or that and you know, an attorney can loosely say, well, according to the language, we interpret it this way, where another one could say, according to the language, we interpret it a different way. But if the rules have been set, we know the rules, there's just a lot of rules, and we follow the rules, what's wrong with that? They came out with the rule book. Just because we read the rules, what's funny is some of the time the people that come out with the rule book criticize and point fingers at the people that follow the rules the best and, and or hire an entire team of people to know the rules so that they can pay as legally, legally, as little as possible in taxes, but still paying what they owe. And that's what setting up these entities starts to get into. Okay? Uh, and we're never going to you know, talk about anything that's going to help people uh, illegally hide money from the government, but hey, legally, it's legal, right? It is legal. Uh, to set this up, it saves you some money in taxes, you still pay what you owe. You're a great citizen. You know, uh, you pay your taxes and off you go. So, if there's a way you could legally save money on anything, wouldn't you do it? I think the answer is yes. My answer would be yes. If I can legally save money and it's not screwing anybody over, doing harm to somebody else, do it. Absolutely. So that is our lesson on the board today. Um, we'll finish up uh, lesson 53 uh, on uh, C corps. We'll just touch on on C corps uh, and on uh, trust owned uh, assets, and then we'll probably end our section on on legal entities. So have a fantastic day. Go learn something new. Go apply what you've learned. Uh, make a difference uh, in your own finances. Go make a difference for other people as well. Thank you for joining us today on the Impact School of Money and we'll see you later. Class dismissed. Mm -hmm.